Hey y'all, welcome back to Barbecue Social Distancing. So right now we've got uh, COVID going on, COVID-19, aka coronavirus, and it is causing us to basically stay home. So I figured I would do a video today covering pork spare ribs on the smoker. And what I like to do is what's called a 221. So there's a 321, a 221, a 1621, whatever it is. But 221, basically what that means is I'm going to smoke it unwrapped for two hours. I'm going to wrap it in aluminum foil, smoke it for two more hours, and then I'm going to rest it for one. Realistically, I'm going to rest it for about 30 to 45 minutes. So that is a 221. Basically, got my schedule written out here. Started the fire at 9 o'clock, and I season the ribs at 10 15 and we'll do a, a section within this video where i go over the seasoning that i use just a real quick uh, rundown on seasoning how i season them uh, that kind of thing and then we've got the ribs on the pit at 11 o'clock right now it's uh five till noon so they've been on for about an hour uh, I love spare ribs, especially on a hot day. It's supposed to be 95 degrees today, but on a hot day like this, it's great to do spare ribs because it's a fast cook. You don't have to spend all day smoking a brisket, and uh, ribs are, you know, you're basically done outside pretty quickly. Uh, if you start your ribs early in the morning, I say early in the morning, if you start your ribs around, <clears throat> like I did, get your fire going around 9 o'clock, you're out of here by 3 o'clock off the pit, and you're resting. We're expecting a little bit of weather today, so we might get some rain uh, around two o'clock. So there is a cr there, there is a crutch that you can have uh, when doing ribs. Once you wrap your ribs, if you get bad weather coming in like I do today, uh, potentially you can take your ribs, wrap them up, and throw them in the oven. Once you wrap them, they've taken all the smoke they're gonna get. So realistically, you're basically using your stick burner as a, an oven, basically. And uh, you can move them to the oven uh, if you get rain coming in like I might. I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get them done on the smoker uh, before the rain comes in. But we'll see how that goes. Uh, let's, uh, let's move on straight into the video. Huh, we're gonna season up some pork ribs. You all ready? Now, let's open these up.
natural. See if I can get this focused in here. Natural, no antibiotics. St. Louis style. So the price on these is three seventy nine uh, per pound, and this one, this one right here, is three point six one pounds. Just to give you an example. I'm going to trim this off right here. Right there. Slice it off. Everything else looks, everything else looks good. That right there. This little flap right here, we're going to take it off. And then you've got this lining that runs up and down through here. This lining, what you do is you use a, a butter knife, paper towel. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna slip it underneath here, like that. We take this paper towel, we grab it, and we'll pull it back. But first, we gotta trim this off. Throw that over there and discard that. All right, it's good. Just a little spur out of there, right there. Discard that. All right, we're good. So, what you're gonna do is you stick your knife and get this cam and get this to focus in here. So you're gonna get it, there's a bone right there. And you just wanna take your butter knife, work it in there, and just press it up against like that. And you'll get through it. Even with a butter knife, you'll still get through there. And you'll get that clean bone right there. But what we're gonna do now is you get a paper towel. It's amazing how much a paper towel helps on this. You really wanna use a paper towel, it's very important. And you're essentially just gonna grab a hold of this. And we're just going to pull it back. So you get a good hold on it. And once we get it started there, grab that flap right there. Oops. That off. And it gets you a good clean backing of it. You don't have to pull the backing off. Um, a lot of restaurants don't pull the backing off. They cook through it and it just gives you a little bit more of a bite. But what I'm looking for is pull off the bone, very tender uh, bone or meat on the, in between these ribs. And I don't want to. Got a little spur there. A little spur. And I don't want to have to cook through that. These will show up later right here, these little knuckles. Anyways, that one's good on the backing. We really, I'm going to leave that on there. We'll see if we can cook through it. And this thing's got tendon still on there. Pull that off, we don't need that. That's a bone. We'll cut this off when it's done. All right. So quick review, we've opened up our pork ribs. Um, we've gone through and we've trimmed off this little cap up here. We've trimmed off this little piece that flaps on there. We don't want that on there. And we've pulled the backing off using a butter knife and paper towel to just pull it off real easy. So now, we've got that done. We're gonna go ahead and season these up. 
and I've got a, a seasoning that I use. It's uh, pretty much the same thing that Franklin does. Um, it's salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, and a little bit of chili powder for a little spice. This is chicken. So I do it in a. This is chupacabra rub, but it's not the rub that I'm using. I just use this container. So you can completely forget about that for now. Uh, that's my mixture. And on the back of the rib, I season it. I just don't season it as much. And you can see, I use a big pepper flake. Franklin doesn't use that big of a pepper flake. But I like it that way. And depending on how you shake these shakers, because the way that pepper goes, you can see that the pepper comes out first, but if you kind of tilt it back a little bit or forward, just depending on how the pepper is positioned, you can get that the rest of that seasoning to come out. Oh yeah, I love that pepper on there. All right, that side's done. Flip them over, and this is where the real party starts. And you want to season these pretty liberally. You know, you don't want to leave anything uncovered. You want that seasoning to really get all over that rib real good. Rub it in. You literally, like, it's called a rub, right? So you rub it in. And I'm going to be throwing these right on the smoker just after getting them seasoned. Some people will season them a little sooner. There's different theories on whether or not the salt will uh, dry it out or not. I don't think it does. So you can do them a little earlier if you want. Get some seasoning over here sides. Real good. And again, I'm not worrying about making a mess. Nothing like that. I can see I've got this bag down to catch it all. Alright. We're seasoned up. That was that's a 12 ounce container of Chupacabra and you can see I used almost all of it. check the uh, temperature on the pit. Let's go over here. So we've created our fire, we've got our pit up to temp, it's been running at temp for 
uh, roughly about 45 minutes to an hour. We got a good bed of coals going, and we've seasoned our ribs, we've trimmed them, we've pulled the backing off of them, and now we're going to make sure that we've got something to spray on the ribs to make sure they stay wet. Now we'll help them stay moist. It'll also, it'll also add some seasoning to them. What I like to use is apple cider vinegar, which is pretty common when you're doing ribs. And then I also like to add a little apple juice to it, just to kind of sweeten that apple cider vinegar up. Because I don't add sugar, I don't rub sugar on my, on my ribs. A lot of people will add sugar late on, uh, or they'll put it in the seasoning whenever they're doing their dry rub on there. And basically what you do is you just do a mixture of these two. I do it to taste. Plus I just, I've done it enough times now that I know how much of each one of these to put in there. And I use, you put it in a sprayer. I use a solo sprayer. It's something similar to like a, a garden sprayer. And what you do is you, you can get this on Amazon. I'll leave a link below on where to get this on Amazon. But you don't have to, a lot of people use just a spray bottle. And that, you're going to leave your pit open for a long time if you're trying to do this. And so I use this one because you can pump this up and you build pressure and then you just hold the trigger down and it sprays. You can adjust your stream, of course. Alright, folks. So we've got the ribs pulled off. We've had them on the smoker now for quite a while. All right, we're reading, reading 135 uh, inside temperature. So that's good. We are, we're ready to wrap. So, what I do is, I get my spray, and I really load them up. Bunch in there. What that's going to do is, putting all that juice on there, is it's going to basically steam the rib inside the package off the bone. So we, they're cooked at this point. We could cut them right now and eat them. But all they have right now is smoke and a little bit of tenderness. Wrapping them with this aluminum foil is really what's going to give it that tender pull off the bone. So, like I said, I double wrap. Okay. And what we're going to do is get our double wrap. Flatten them and make a seam. And then I'm going to go over once basically to lock that seal in okay and then I'm going to double that over again and then close the end up Back onto the pit. All right, folks, we're, we've gone through our entire smoke at this point with the ribs unwrapped, okay? So we did fire, we did season the ribs, put the ribs on the pit. We ran them for two hours, about two hours and 15 minutes actually. Uh, and we've now entered the wrap ribs. So we just wrapped them as you saw in the video and walked you through those that step. So now, basically, we can check wrap ribs off of our list. And now it's just a waiting game. All we gotta do now, since the ribs aren't gonna be taking any more smoke, is just make sure the pit stays at a constant temperature. You know, we've got two hours of, of letting them sit there. We're not gonna open the pit anymore. We're just gonna feed it wood and let it burn. Keep our temperature between 250, 275, and We'll be ready to go and do our, our rest for 30 to 45 minutes. We're doing well.
All right, guys, we did it. Smoked two racks of ribs today. I think they're gonna look really good. I think they're gonna taste even better. All right, so we did fire. We've gone all the way through. We've rested, right? We're done. It's time to eat. Well, take that back. It's not time to eat. We still gotta slice them. So I'm gonna show you a video of me slicing the ribs up. You'll see that. I'm gonna take them inside and I'm gonna go eat because I'm starving. I'm so ready to eat, all right? So I've got a station set up over here for slicing these ribs. Cutting board, knife. Ready to go. See you in a bit. All right. So we've got our ribs. We're ready to open one up and slice it up. So here's our first look at how they turned out. I can smell them. They smell great. Whew. See how they pulled off the bone there? That's what we're looking for right there. Just. Looks fantastic. Now you can use this juice right here. Right here? You can use that as an au jus to, you know, to dip this in and make a barbecue sauce out of it. But we are going to discard. All right, the other. I mean, that's, that's what I'm looking for in a rib. Holy cow. A big old chunk of. There we go. Now, what you can do is, because you can't really see the ribs real well, so you're not real sure where to cut, you can flip this over and get a good view of these ribs. Okay? And that'll show you where to cut them. Right there, just like that. Now they're going to start turning on us a little bit. Right here. Usually we'd get more of a smoke ring than that. But, I don't know if that's focusing in or not there. that to focus in. Not a lot of smoke ring on it. All right, so I'm gonna give you all kind of a behind the scenes look of everything that's been going on today, uh, just so you can kind of see what goes on whenever I'm not filming, if you will, even though I am filming. Yeah, you get it. So uh, real quick, just this is the, just a workbench within my garage. You can see, you know, Pretty much my garage the pit out there you can see the pit my truck uh just you know everyday garage got a refrigerator but uh kind of here is where i've been doing all of my prep work and everything um and then i had a gopro mounted up here looking down on that so the gopro was here and then I 
Yep. And then you can see, you know, here's the pit I've been cooking on. I've got a fan and just a chair that I've been sitting on. And then this is the dry erase board that I that I use that I keep in my garage uh, for I do I do a lot of projects here at the house. Uh, sometimes by myself, sometimes with just buddies. You can see we've got a the old bar from the tailgate. A lot of y'all have been to the tailgate that we do. We're Texas tailgaters. This is a basically just a scoreboard for washers, pitch and washers. So I've got my washer pits right over there as you can see. And this is a scoreboard. It pulls apart and does like a kind of an A-frame type thing. So this pulls out. You put your cups in there and keep score. But uh, yeah, this is uh, kind of the barbecue social home edition or barbecue social garage edition as you can see but just wanted y'all to i just wanted y'all to get a kind of a look of kind of what's going on in the background here uh this video i'm filming on a gopro so i've got a gopro 4 that i use and um, i also use my phone also so for filming i use uh this gopro hero 4 and I use my phone, which is a uh, Samsung Galaxy Note 9. And then for editing video, I use uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, which I'm still kind of learning. But it's, you know, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting better. So we'll see how it goes. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed the video that I did on smoking pork ribs. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I love smoking pork ribs. I love eating pork ribs especially uh probably here pretty soon i'm gonna do some either some really big thick beef ribs or i'm gonna do a pork butt and do a pulled pork something along those lines uh but yeah this is uh just a you know quick look at behind the scenes appreciate y'all watching uh if you haven't gone already check out my facebook for barbecue social instagram uh, at barbecue underscore social. I've got Twitter barbecue social and for my YouTube channel just check it out uh, I'd love for y'all to comment and Please hit the subscription button and give me a thumbs up. That'd be great. Thanks